Hello family, this is your brother Shama Chenaka with my beautiful wife Leandra Chenaka. We are the Chenakas. <laughs> Super excited today to have the Willows in oh, the house. The Willows! Your drum roll everybody. That's a special <laughs> surprise. We are here live in South Africa, Jobek Midran. We are super excited to have the windows for the very first time in South Africa. Yeah, you okay. can allow them to introduce themselves and everything, but I just want to know, how are you finding South Africa so far? Yeah, South Africa is beautiful. We'll be having a great mm. time. You took us out, you know, so we got to lovely places. and <laughs> We had some beautiful meals. I, I think South Africa is nice. South Africa is really nice. It's a very beautiful place. Very beautiful. Very, very yeah. beautiful. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So please, wherever you're connecting from, you got to subscribe, you better like, share. would appreciate it so much. Thank you for that. So we're going to allow you guys to introduce yourself. I'm sure people would like to know who are the Winlows, where the Winlows come from, how did the name come about? Isn't it so? You one, know? one question at a time. Okay. One question at a time. So we're going to allow the questions to flow. And I believe that you guys are going to be blessed. You got to understand we are coming here not just with the physical element part of discussion, but there will be also a spiritual part of the discussion, <laughs> which you guys you would appreciate so much. That will help your relationships and your marriages. Over to you, the Winlows. Okay, um, so I think you are doing the talking, right? Well, my name is Anwili Ojekere. Anwili, yeah. Anwili. Yeah, so yeah. our name is Anwili and my Please, name Please, the is... real name is not Winlo, huh? It's Anwili. Anwili, How yeah. do you say? Anwili. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so my name is um, Ois. Ois. Um, Anwili, and mm. uh, we are the Winlows. Yeah, we are the Winlows. So the Winlows is a combination of Anwili and Ois. Mm -hmm. Winli, Winlows, Ois. Oh, wind yeah, loss. so the wind, W I N L, came from Anwindi. Yeah. Then the O S came from Ois. Wow. So it's not a Latin name. We didn't go from, we didn't go to the mountain. And then God said. <laughs> yeah, now that is it, Ibro. Actually, we had a friend, she's American. Uh -huh. um, so when we got married, she, she relocated down to Nigeria. Uh -huh. And um, she couldn't pronounce my name, Ois. Yeah. And she couldn't pronounce my wife's name, Anwali. Mm -hmm. So she just started calling us Willows. She just crashed the name. Yeah. And wow. just started calling us Willows. So it was Willows. like divine prophetic. Yeah. yeah. So Amazing. when she started calling us that name, when we needed to start um, our drama and film ministry, yeah. we adopted the name, The Willows. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. Nice. So that's it. Yes. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So I would like to know, you know, everybody, I'm sure everybody that is watching right now from all over the world, they would really like to know, how did you guys meet? Mm. Like, as a book. Is it a divine encounter? Mm -hmm. Was there a prophet Elijah? <laughs> <laughs> that spoke. Would really please take us through the journey of how you guys met as a, as a couple from... The, the, the relationship part of it into courtship and into marriage. And uh, was it love at first sight? Like you saw her and then you knew. No, 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 no. This no, is no. the one. Life. No, it wasn't. <laughs> love. It wasn't love at first sight because she wasn't my type. Mm, and it okay. wasn't my type. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a serious thing. <laughs> you guys are ready for something. <laughs> Please take us no, through how no, you guys no, meet. No, no. I don't fall in love with people at first sight. Hey. <laughs> no, we, we don't fall in love with people but we crush on people at first sight. No, I never will crush that. Hey, way, I crush. I'm sure you saw something now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, apparently during my youth service year, um, she was um, she was done with her youth service. I had delays in my school, yeah. you know. So I went to a state in my youth service. Uh -huh. So when I got there, I joined this church. And while I was in this church, I became so active in the church, mm -hmm. you know, um, I became the youth coordinator. Then in that church, because I was so active. good at coordinating mm -hmm. people and all mm -hmm. the stuff. They actually so you started coordinating at yourself. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so in that church, they nicknamed me Minister of Women Affairs. Okay. Ah. Okay. You know, mm. because I knew how to coordinate all the ladies. In a good way. Wow. In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> what a powerful title. <laughs> <laughs> Minister of Women Affairs. You know. So, um, so it was it was a title that even my pastor 
respected. Mm. <laughs> so one day she joined church after service, she booked a counseling with my pastor. Mm. She was heartbroken. She actually came to church heartbroken. Mm. And the guy she dated broke her heart. Let me amount on that. Mm -hmm. You know? know. So when she came, she was having a personal counseling with pastor in the yeah. office. Um, yeah. Pastor sent for me. Mm. So when pastor sent for me, he told me to um, come to the office. I was at the office and introduced me to this um, lady that was sobbing. She was crying. Mm. You know, she had finished saying all the stories and all, you know. And pastor said, Louise, take care of her. Mm. She just wow. joined church. She needs to be, she needs a friend and all those stuff. Just take oh. care of her. Wow. You know, so that's how we became friends. Wow. You know. So when I met her at the office for the first time, she wasn't my spec, she wasn't my type, you know. Yeah. She was so slim. I don't like, I didn't like slim girls then. Mm -hmm. You know, I needed a lady that has front uh, and back. back. She understands, something that you yeah. can hold. Uh. I think I saw an episode. <laughs> 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 you said you me then. <laughs> you saw, you right. I'm telling you, she was like, she was like pansy. Uh. I'm telling you, those days, if you put an industrial fan close by, the it fan can Ah, I'm telling you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she wasn't what I was looking out for. So, mm. But then we became friends. Um, she was so active in church. Yeah. She joined me in a media department. Yeah. She joined me in drama department. Mm. She joined me in protocol department. She yeah. joined me in the youth so fellowship. Yeah. yeah. So she was just always there. We we're practically working Amazing. together, um, teasing ourselves, yeah. insulting ourselves, yeah. quarreling. Because yeah. we never thought we were going to get married. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, yeah. so at the time she left for, she got a job and she left Asaba. So. Yeah. And I the really city I was in. Yeah. yeah so I, I located down to Benin as well. So, but then I was still seeking, trusting God for a wife. Yeah. You know, I actually told God the kind of wife I want to get married okay. to, at least. Sorry to interject okay, right there. We're going to come there where yeah. you I just left it. We want to find from Madam Winlow. What brought you to see the pastor? I mean, you were crying, you were sobbing. I was heartbroken. Please, please take us through the journey. Like, what motivated you to say, you know, because a lot of people when they are heartbroken and they are shattered, they kind of withdraw from everybody. They don't want to see anybody, mm. communicate with anybody. They don't want to even attend church because mm. they feel disappointed with men and with God as yeah. well. So what made you to step up to say, I think I need help. I need to take this step to seek advice and counseling. Mm. And what is the importance of that as well? Okay, so for me, I mean, I knew I needed to like get my life back. So it felt like I was kind of in pieces. So I would just talk, you know, I wasn't doing anything at all. I just felt that I needed healing. You know, my relationship then, being the first relationship I had gotten into, it kind of broke me to the point where I didn't really like men or really look forward to getting into a relationship, you know. So I just needed to cry out to somebody. And coming to that church, I felt, comfort I felt comfortable talking mm. with my pastor. So I opened up to him, you know, and that was when this young dude um, saw me yeah. when I was talking to him. Yeah, so true. many times people who don't let go or do not find a room um, to let go, oftentimes also, you know, chase away people that have good potentials. Yeah. Not even just chasing, they may not even see people who have good potentials. And even when the ones that have good potentials come around, they may chase them away because they have refused to let go of yeah. their past. So mm. I needed a fresh start. I needed peace. Mm. So I had to run for it. I had to, I had to find it. I yeah. had to go for it. You know, wow. So that's what made me. That's amazing. So yeah. um, just to follow up on what you just said, I think that is true. Um, we talk about having a rebound. Mm. So that is moving from one relationship straight into another. Your advice be mm. to someone mm -hmm that is right now feeling like I'm just going to jump from one thing mm. to the next. Yeah. And also, if there's no avenue that the church provides specifically to be counseled like how you were counseled, what are some of the other things that a person can do to seek for help? Mm. So that they don't bleed on people that did not cut them, mm. you understand? Yeah. As a result of feeling like I'm just lonely, so I just need somebody to or don't yeah. Yeah. or to prove a point to my ex to say yeah, yeah. i want to show you i can do better mm -hmm. yeah so if i get you correctly and it's okay if i don't get really get you that's why my husband is here <laughs> no, it's all fine. right so um for me looking getting into another relationship for healing does not heal mm -hmm. yeah because 
how can you be hot and in your hotness, in your hotful state, you cannot... A hotful person is not full of love to find love. Mm. A hotful person is full of hot, that's why it's hotful. Mm. So you are full of hot, and if you are full of hot, you cannot be full of love to find love. You have to be full True. of love to know love. Mm. So another relationship cannot heal you because mm. You are not, you are full of hot, you're not full of love at that point in time. Even if there's love inside of you, you are full of hot more than you are full of love. Yeah. You cannot give expression of what love is really about mm -hmm. to even see who is loving you. Mm -hmm. So when you get into another relationship, it cannot heal you. Only get in to only, you know, do what they call a temporary, um, what's the word? Uh, is it a temporary makeover yeah, or something? Yeah, temporary stay. stay yeah, 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 So it doesn't, it doesn't So it do makes it. you just feel good. Yeah, yeah, it just makes you feel good. For that time. Yes. But it hasn't solved anything. It hasn't yet. solved anything, yeah. So, so that's, that's what it is, you know. So, so it is not safe. It is dangerous to get into another relationship when you have not been healed of your mm. past relationship. Yeah. So I would always say people will get to another relationship, but that, just like you said, is rebound. So you mm. also make yourself out of bands yeah. for the good <laughs> around you. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> so please, sir, take us through. So from the youth service, now it's done. She moves to Benin. What happened from there? No, she moved to Wari. Wari or oh, Delta, yeah. yeah. Yes, then what so happened? So actually, uh, actually, I was meeting um, ladies, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, my desire was front and back. So I was yeah. looking, I was seeing ladies that had front and back, <laughs> yeah. you know. But then I wasn't finding purpose. Yeah. So you a Calabar woman. Calabar woman. <laughs> <laughs> You know, okay. so uh, I also find a purpose. You yeah. know, I, I, maybe in my country, um, yeah. that's one of the kind of things every young guy is just talk about. You know, yeah. if you are just young, you have to get married. You are trying to look at the kind of things you see yeah. on TV and all. Mm. You know, but then I needed for once to ask the Holy Spirit. Mm. You know. And I told myself that mm. I was going to get married at a particular age. Yeah. I told God I was going to marry at 25. Yeah. And I had passed 25. Yeah. And I was not settling down. You know? And I didn't want to get to 30 before I get married. Mm. So for the first time, I needed to talk to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And when I spoke to him, he told me something. He said, Okay, sir, so she went to worry after a youth service in Benin. Take us what happened from there. Yeah, so I actually planned that I was going to get married at 25. Yeah. But now, I've passed 25 years. So I was in, you know, I was wondering why I couldn't settle down, other than the fact that maybe I was very carnal in my thinking. It's possible for you to be deeply spiritual, and yet you're moved by the things of the flesh. Yeah. You know, many times as believers, we should be sensitive to what God wants for mm -hmm. us part time. You know, so at this particular time, I actually just needed to speak to the Holy Spirit. Like, you know, I really want to get married. I don't want to get to 30 before I get married. So, while I was talking to the Holy Spirit, he told me clearly, I mean, clearly. He said, you are looking for a wife. You are just struggling unnecessarily. Have you considered my daughter, Anwenli? Mm -hmm. I was like, really? Mm -hmm. You know, we've been friends for like, Four years, and I've never considered her as a wife. Sorry, sir, to in, uh, interject <laughs> there. I have a very good question yes. pertaining to what you're saying. I think mm. a lot of young people, they always ask this question. How do I know this is the right partner for me? Mm. You understand? Because in the perception of what you just said now is God spoke to you yeah. and said, this is the rightful person yeah. for you. So how do you now decode that this is the voice of God, mm. not the voice of flesh? Because flesh also speaks now. Definitely. It's what you are seeing, you are liking, and you say, this is the will of God yeah. for me. So how do you then separate the two so that you'll be able not to fall out of alignment of what God wants you to Okay, to um, in answering that question, let's go to the beginning yeah. of creation yeah. and how... Um, how Adam found his wife. Yeah. Um, first of all, when God created Adam, he first of all introduced Adam to the animals. Mm -hmm. And he told, I, I, I believe at that point, you know, um, what God was doing to Adam was not necessarily because he wanted him to name the animals. Mm -hmm. He wanted to teach Adam that, you see, your decisions are not in full fulfillment if you do not 
consider me, if you do not acknowledge me. So Adam was introduced to the animals. The Bible says, and God said, he should name the animals. And also, if he could get anybody that is suitable for him, you know. So Adam was searching, and met lion, and met pigs, and mm. met all manner of animals. animals. You know, the Bible said that, and he couldn't find anyone suitable for him. Mm. You know, so at that point, he had used all his flesh. Mm. He had used his calculation. He has used his permutation. Like mm. he had saw lion and like tried to make it work and did not work. He had seen snake and he had tried. You know, mm. so when he came to the end of himself, mm. that was when God mm. put him in a deep sleep, in a state of rest. Mm. And when he was at that place of rest. Mm. God now took a rib out of him mm. and brought out Eve. Mm. So, beautiful question you have asked. Mm. When, how do you know this person? How do I know my life partner? Mm. It is simple. Mm. You see, those activities we do, mm. trying to like help God, you know, maybe it's the lion, mm. maybe it's the pig. And that's why many times the animals usually come. So somebody can come and like, don't mind him, he's a dog. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that guy, he messed me up. He's just like mm. a snake. Mm. No, no, you first of all be introduced to animals yeah. before you find your heath. Yeah. Now, it's at that point where you become, where you've come to the end of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know you've labored, mm. you've tried all your calculations, you made relationship work. Is at that point. The Holy Spirit always waits for us at that point. When you have lost everything, and you're like, no, 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 I, I, I don't think I can find a good person. Mm. And that is when God puts you in a state of rest. Yeah. I say, okay, now let me now do what I need to do for you. Mm. You know, so wow. when I, what I advise young people is this, mm. you know, you want to go into a relationship and all those stuff, you know, have friends, live your life, understanding the fact that it is God. The Bible says, is the one that makes things beautiful yeah. in his time, time. Mm. and not your time. Yeah. So don't try to force it, don't try to make it work. Mm -hmm. You know, let it just play along. And God himself is the master planner. Mm. He has orchestrated, the, I mean, from the day I met my wife, mm. from that day, he had been planning it, mm. you know. So mm. he's the one, so just freestyle, working wow. with the Holy That's Spirit. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit and he was going to direct your path. Yeah, yeah. And then I also say this in addition, you know, um, there's something very striking that happened before Adam began to name animals. So yeah. He wasn't confused when he saw lion. He called lion lion. Lion, yeah. You know, you know, if you look at that scripture, it says God breathed into the nostrils mm. of mm. Adam. Mm. So, in other words, before God brought the animals and he, and he said Adam should name them, he first of all breathed into the nostrils. So. Mm. One of the things that is very, in fact, one major thing that is required for mm. choosing the right person is your sense of perception. Mm. Yeah. The perception. So Adam perceived mm. and he knew that lion is lion, lion is not dog. Mm. Because he had to, God had to give him the ability to perceive mm. that when lion came, he called lion, lion. Mm. He true. called cow, cow. He mm. called dog, dog. Mm. And the same clear thing, discernment. clear discernment. So mm. you must have the ability to perceive. And that mm. comes through what my husband said, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. You can never go wrong with perceiving. Mm. You can never go wrong with designing. You can never go wrong with it. You know, wow. and then many of the times you don't have to have a failed relationship before you have a successful one. Yeah. And, 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 and because mm. and because the Holy Spirit is always speaking to every believer. That's the truth. Yeah. He's always speaking so to everybody. So unfortunately, when well, we now see the lion, we now call the lion Eve. Yes. Mm. You know, mm. so God has given us the discernment. He mm. has given us the ability. He has breathed into us, mm. into our nosery. So we carry God in us. Yes. Yeah. So he has given us the ability to discern. Yes. You know, if you ask a lot of believers who have had challenges in their relationship or maybe they have failed marriage, they'll tell you that that perception was there, yeah. Yeah. but they neglected it. Mm -hmm. They ignored it. Yeah, they, 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 the called, yeah they called their lion Eve, mm. or they called their, the dog they met, they called it Adam. Mm. Mm. Yeah, true. That's also a very powerful one. So, some yeah. passion is very important because not everyone who you are going to be friendly with. So why it's good to make friends. Friendship is very nice. Me and my husband were friends yeah. before we got married, before we started a relationship. But 
I also had other friends. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because many of the time we say marry your friends, but not mm. every friend is marriageable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah so whilst they are friends with you, you have to be able to perceive beyond one, friendship. Beyond friendship. Is this person really marriageable? Because mm. you can have a friend that's very good for business but not good for marriage. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. I actually want <laughs> want to add the follow up quick follow up I, question on that I, one I as well. Yes, Please I have a question like mm. So you were saying that God spoke to you audibly yeah. about this specific unwilling is yeah. your wife, right? What do you say about people that approach ladies and say, hey, I heard from God said. you are my <laughs> wife. <laughs> and then the lady ends up feeling like, oh, I can't go. I can't say no. It's God. What God has said. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, okay, so um, there is no confusion when it comes to God speaking. Mm. Now, He didn't come to first of all tell me God spoke to you. God mm. said you mm. are my wife. Mm. I tell people that if God told you mm. that somebody is your wife or somebody is your, you didn't, you don't have to really go meet the person and tell the person God said you are my wife. Mm. It's just like you're applying for a job. God says go to the company and go and apply for this job. Mm. You won't go there and say see God you. said. You know, God, God said, said the I job is mine. And the job is yeah. mine. No. God spoke to you to have a direction. Mm. So you are going to meet the person not saying God said. When you do that, you are not confident of what God really said. That's true. Wow. You are actually, you are you are actually confused. You are manipulating. Yeah. Wow. You understand? And then that God also told the person that this person is your wife. Mm. It does not also mean that the wife that God has spoken does should not have confirmation. Mm. No. Mm. You understand? Mm. So first of all, my own money comes to tell me, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really. God, God said, said <laughs> you are my wife. He I never saw did you that. in a dream. <laughs> I saw you in a dream and God said, yeah. no, he didn't do that. I actually yeah, kept was, the prophecy to he myself. He kept the prophecy to yeah. myself. In fact, it was oh. after we had even gotten married. That, that I shared. On one location, during yeah. a conference, they asked, wow. that's when he mentioned, he, yeah. he didn't wow. tell me. He just felt peace. He just, we just became, we just, we were already friends anyways. So we just started having conversations. And from there, he just jarred. And then one day, he asked me out. And that was it. So just a follow-up question on bottom. So what made you to say yes to him? What is it that you saw and said? I'm a fine guy. <laughs> <laughs> fine boy. Yeah, you're fine. Yes, yes, now. So what is it that made, I mean... Uh, your your husband is a pastor, yeah. full blown man of God, highly anointed. <laughs> you know what? What I mean? What made you to? Because I mean, you are coming from this space of being heartbroken from also a church boy. Yeah. Now you go straight again a to another pastor, church a, boy, a, a pastor, a pastor also. Yeah. Oh my a God! Pastor, broke her heart. pastor, pastor. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Now again, you say yes to it. So what is it that made gave you that confidence, mm. assurance to say okay. this is my man? Born of my boy. Yeah, so the first thing first was I needed to understand that titles are different from personality. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that I got awesome. into a past into a relation that hurts me with a pastor didn't mean that this other pastor was going to also hurt me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So first of all I had to know that there's a difference between title and personality. Mm. So I married his personality, not, not the, the title. title. Mm. I married the man, not in quotes the pastor wow. that God called him to be. So now, so that was the first thing I needed to establish in my, in my heart, to be able to look beyond the experience I went through with the pastor, mm. to see that this is different. Just because he is another pastor, mm. doesn't mean that he's going to be the same as the other person. So I differentiated it. Then number two, I had um, the things I desired in a guy. Mm. And I had, there were, so, there were quite a number, but there were three core. Mm. Number one, the guy must fear God, must love God. Mm. Now he's not going to do it. He's not going to be a theoretical. Thing. I'm going to see the, the fruits. The, the fruits. fruits of it. Yes. Number two, he has to be very hardworking. Mm. Yeah, he has to be very hardworking. He has to be somebody who thinks outside the box. Mm. Because I came from a broken home. My parents are not together. Mm. So I saw some attributes in my father that I do not think that I would want. In a guy. Yeah. Mm. So I had those three things and I was not going to compromise it for anything. Mm. So when he, when we became friends already, so by the time I started noticing that this guy wants to take this friendship into another level, I had to start observing through the lens of relationship, no longer at the level of friendship. Yeah. And that's a topic on its own. So I started observing and I'm like, okay. So I realized that this guy loved God, even as a friend. Yeah. Yeah. He loved God, he wasn't pretentious about it. He wasn't trying to feign it. Yeah. He wasn't trying to force scriptures to prove that he's, he's a, a Christian. God, yeah. I could see the fruits. Yeah. By their fruits, you would know them. Yeah. So I could see it. 
you know and then too i could see someone who was very hard working mm. like my husband would think outside the box he would work hard. He was so diligent. Mm, yeah. So I said, oh, wow. It wasn't somebody who would want to wait for end of the month before he receives. And that's not bad in itself. Mm. But just looking for something. So mm. he would, can think out of the box, take risks and all that. So by the time I saw all of this in him, mm. I was like, wow. He wasn't trying to also convince me that, oh, you know what? By the time I get married, I will own companies and yeah. all. No, no, no. He wasn't mm. giving me theoretical Promises, vision. Yeah. I saw a visionary in a man that was, and the vision was running. Wow. Mm. So that's, that's why I said yes. Wow. That's so amazing. I didn't marry a pastor, I married a personality. Wow. Mm. That's amazing. I noticed, Pastor, that you were saying that you were checking and you told yourself by the age of 25, yeah. I would have married yeah. right. Mm. So, what would you guys say to someone who's now, you know, especially women? For women, it's it's a little bit worse. Women say the clock is ticking. Yeah. I'm now thirty and above. Hmm. I've done everything. I have chatted in the group. I did the prayers. I did everything that I could possibly think of. Like, how would you encourage someone like that? Yeah. So um, yeah. I I think that uh, marriage in itself. Um, has a lot of God factor in it. Mm -hmm. And um, in as much as we have our will, especially for us who are believers, the moment we surrendered our life to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. He had a part that is playing in our life as well too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, certain times as well, the moment we give our life to Christ, you know, God would now want to direct our steps and order us to the right person. Mm -hmm. And Maybe you may decide that you only get married at 25. Mm. And maybe God has other plans for you. Mm. Maybe you plan to marry at 20, 22. Yeah. Or you plan 25 and God says he's going to be 18. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Mm. You know, or he's going to be, you know, the point is this, like the scripture I said, the Bible says in his time, he makes mm. all things beautiful. Mm. Mm. You know, no matter how you force a thing, if it is not yet the time, yeah. it will not come out well. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, if a lady says, my clock is ticking, I'm getting old, I'm <coughs> clocking 30 and yeah. all those stuff. The next question yeah. I was going to ask, what will you do? Mm -hmm. Jesus was asking the disciples, he said, who amongst you can add a strand of air to your hair? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you don't Powerful. have the capacity. Yeah. So he's saying that, be anxious for nothing, mm -hmm. but in prayers mm -hmm. and in thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Let your request, request be known. made known. So my, this, my assignment now is to make my request known, known mm -hmm. why I am thankful mm -hmm. and why I am in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Understanding the fact that I do not have the capacity to marry myself. Yeah. I do not have... <laughs> <laughs> there's no miracle I would yeah. do now to bring a man to come and marry me now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, that's why a lot of ladies try a lot of things. You realize that the more you try, the more it's not working. Yeah. Mm. So at that time, it is not for you to understand that wow. in his time, mm. he makes things beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Powerful. And, and just to quickly add to this, in his time makes things beautiful, very mm. powerful. But also, we must recognize, these persons must recognize his time. That's mm. true. Mm. And don't yeah. miss his time. time. Mm. Yes, don't time. miss his time. Because sometimes the bit of, oh God, please can you direct me or show me who this person is. He will show you, but you refuse to accept. Accept. Yeah. Yeah. Chale is here. Is the person. <laughs> and sometimes he says, it's now it's time for you to get married. You have refused to accept that this is the time yeah. that he's giving. This true. is his time. Yeah. So you need to be careful because... Uh, as much as you know in his time it makes all things beautiful you also have a responsibility mm. to acknowledge that this is his time you need to sense it and acknowledge it embrace it wow. that this is his time and wow. not all delays is yes. from god oh mm. beautiful mm. yeah not all. so but delays not denial right yeah so certain times we may say oh the delay is god's no, will not all. but not all delay yes. is from god yes yeah. There are certain journeys the Israelites had to go for 400 so years. That was it the way. Yes. This was 40 years journey yeah. yes. and you went for 400 years. Yeah. Yes. You know, So there are certain delays that are not from God. Yeah. There are human will yeah. as well. So, True. so we must be yeah. very sure. Let, let me give an example mm. of my wife. You know, As I when I was in church, you know, I didn't have anything. Mm. You know, they called me a church rat because mm. I was always in church. 
you know, mm. the only property I had was a laptop. I was squatting my pastor's mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. and squatting my mom's house. Mm. And that was when the Spirit of God, I was telling the God that this was the time I was going to get married, you know. In church, the truth is that if I had gone to ask anybody out, they were, nobody took me seriously because I wasn't a serious person. Yeah. You know, I wasn't, I, I wasn't ready, you know, the physical things you see. Yeah, the man is expected. Yeah. Yes. Mm. You know, now I went to my wife, mm. you know, and I said, this is my proposal. I want to get married to you. Wow. And she prayed about it. And in three days, she was ready to give me a yes. Mm. You know, so it is something that we must look out for. Yeah. Wow. You know, That's so, powerful. but a lot of us are not patient enough. enough. Certain times we blame God. God, why would you give me such a man? Mm. Why would you give me such a lady? Sorry to interrupt. In South Africa, they say they don't want to play Bob the Builder. <laughs> <laughs> They want something that is already prepared. It's already made. Yeah. They don't want to labor. They don't want to labor. Uh -huh. So in a bit, so we wanna we're gonna get to the what part of the discussion, guys. If you haven't subscribed or shared, this is the right time. So now there's a lot of things that happen. Just say, please follow the um, what is your tagline? The mm -hmm. windows. They are also follow the windows on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, YouTube. Yes. Yes. So if you haven't shared and subscribed, make sure you do that. Okay. We're going to get to the what part of the discussion. Now, there's a lot of hassle when it comes to relationship and sex. Because mm. a lot of young people, they have a narrative to say, how can you drive a car, buy a car that mm. you have not test drive? Yeah. You know? So what are the boundaries that young people can put to protect themselves? in terms of purity, character, and integrity when it comes to that line. Because there's a lot of uh, mischief, both in the world and even in the body of Christ, in the yeah. church. You realize this one is sleeping with this one, he doesn't like that. Then yeah. he just jumps to the, yeah. to the other one. There's no more. What, what is it that young people can do to protect themselves and also put boundaries? What, or some of the boundaries that helped you guys to build up to actually marriage because yeah. i think that's that's very important because mm. we are living in a generation of society especially here in south africa where you see that there's a lot of teenage pregnancy there's a lot of young people getting pregnant and then the the, the guy disappear mm. he's nowhere to be found he's mm. not in the picture and then you have to find a young lady struggling to go through school mm. and to be a mother at the same time yeah. so what are the things that as young people we can do or that you can advise young people to say that these are the steps that you should follow that aligns to the word of God. Yeah. That will still help you to maintain your purity and integrity before men and before God. Okay. Yeah, so I think because my husband is a man, I really like him to stress on Oh, no, I it. think you should talk about it because you are very good with boundaries. Uh, hey, hey, ah. no, I really wanted to share. Let him share. Uh, a no, man, both, really. both, I think No, there's a both. reason for it, though. Yeah. Because some people say, oh, no, no, because you are a lady, let the man, you know, men, maybe um, women know how to kill themselves more. Than, than, the, than the man, so that's why I said my husband should talk about it. Okay, um, um, b basically, I think one of the first foundations as every believer is to understand what is written in scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, but unfortunately, we have a generation that want to go run this Christian world based on the admiration mm -hmm. and based on trends mm -hmm. rather than the word of God. Mm -hmm. People say the word of God is not trendy. The word of God does not trend. Mm -hmm. the, word, the word of God is truth. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has been and will forever be. And there are written instructions God gave to us. The Bible is a manual for mm. marriage. Mm. And it says the marriage bed should not be defiled. Mm. You know, but a lot of us as believers, we do not take that truth. Maybe because there are no, there are no immediate consequences. You know, um, um, when you and when you go into sexual pleasure, you don't see the immediate consequence. Yeah. You come out and like, oh, my sins are forgiven and so on. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like getting a cigarette to go smoke, for example. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that the people who created the cigarette did not put a warning. Smokers mm -hmm. are liable to die young. Mm -hmm. so, with cancer too. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. So that you took the cigarette the first time and nothing happened. To you, you think nothing had happened. Mm -hmm. But something is already dying. You're dying small, small within inside. you. You get what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So, so it is when the human race now go against the truth mm -hmm. 
of the world. Mm. You know, whether you believe it or not, something is already happening in your life because you are not in alignment mm. with God's purpose and assignment for your life. So, as believers, I would I share the same pain with every Christian. You know, when I was single, I had that pressure. You know, when I was dating my wife, set it as I tell her, I say, God, I just feel like kissing your lips. Mm. You know, when are we going to get married so I can start having sex? Yeah. So I wasn't that man of your God. Your love is better than wine. You understand? Man of God, <laughs> I wasn't that I wasn't that man strong. of God. You know, you know yeah. one of the reasons why a lot of believers fail in mm. sexual purity is that they lie to themselves. Yeah. Mm. You know that no, 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 no. I, I am for. strong. What are you saying? Mm. You know, you lie, you lie to yourself, mm. you lie to your pastor, you present a face mm. that you are not. You you lie to the person you're in a relationship with, you present a face. See, God created us flesh. We are man. Mm. So accept that reality first of all, that I am man, I am mm. fallible, yeah. you know, and anything can happen. So I understood yeah. that fact. And understood the fact that the person I'm in a relationship with is attractive. Yeah. I'm not in a relationship with a stone yeah. or a rock. You get what I'm talking about? Yeah. So let's not be in a relationship where you're like, this place is a rock, so mm. nothing can happen. You know, you see some brothers, they say, ah, if I'm with a lady now, they get just naked now. Yeah, Nothing I we don't feel anything. Uh, okay, uh, God bless you. I appreciate your grace, man of God. Powerful. You know, that mm. grace doesn't work for me. Mm. You know, so, so because I understood this part of my weaknesses, yeah. I needed to set the necessary boundaries in our relationship. Mm. Wow. So when we started our relationship, I told my wife, I said, we are not going to have sex before we get married. Yeah. I don't want to go through that route. I want to know why I'm getting married to you. Yeah. I don't want to get married to you because I had sex with mm. you. Because a lot of people get married to people just because they already had sex with them. Yeah. And they're already committed. Yeah. Yeah. So when they see a lot of negative stuff that mm. they cannot, End that up. are not marriageable, mm. but because they have had sex already, pressure. they have no choice than to marry the person. Yeah. So she told me the same thing. I said, man, I've told God that the guy I'm going to have sex with, it's just I will never have sex with a guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if I if I if you try to make an attempt with me, I will break up the relationship. Mm -hmm. That's what she told me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So first of all, we understand we understood the principle of God for relationship. Mm -hmm. The next step we took was that we had to start setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're careful of the places we met, yeah. you know, we we're careful of the conversation we, we spoke. So at certain times where our conversation was getting into extreme because once in a while you are talking to flesh, yeah. Yeah. you know, we're like, oh, oh, can we recall, can we recall, yeah. can we recall, no, 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 we can't go to this place, yeah. you know, then we got a mentor as well too, an accountable, accountability, accountability partner, partner. Mm -hmm. you know, so we told the person, this is our goal, this is our vision, mm -hmm. please make sure you watch it for us to see that we accomplish it. Yeah. that we are going to get married without having sex. Yeah. So our accountability wow. partner will always check on us Just and say, what's up, what yeah. are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. So one of those days, the guy called me and I said, Luis, where are you? I said, I'm out. He said, by this time, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, where is Aunt Willie? I said, she's with me. Where are you guys? You guys are out. He said, what's wrong with you? Are you married to her? Mm -hmm. You know? I'm like, in your life, don't try that again. I said, yeah. sorry, sir, you yeah. know? But a lot, of, yeah, a lot of young people wouldn't want to put themselves on mm -hmm. their accountability partner. They just feel that they can do it all by themselves. Mm. It's only when they make the mistake, they start crying to the pastor. Yeah. Oh, sir, I made the mistake mm. again. But yeah. before you made the mistake, mm. you, you needed counsel. You needed to be accountable. Mm. You know, then we must open our ear to hear the truth, mm. the right mm. words. Yeah. Some of, some, they are, they are long young, young people. You can't just talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. Their will is their will. Yeah. Yeah. Their choice give, is their choice. Yeah, true. And if you don't give sincere account of your life, yeah. you can't be accountable. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't give sincere account of your life, you can't get a sincere advice. Yeah. Yeah. True. You know, so... Mm. Just to add up yeah. a follow-up question there, Mama Winlow. Okay, sorry, before you even know the follow-up question, yeah. just to add, then also, um, you don't set boundaries mm -hmm. in the middle of relationships. Yeah. Yeah. You set boundaries before you even see the person. Yeah. yeah, you need to know what boundary is for you as a person. Yeah. So why it was easy for me when I met my husband, he had his own boundaries, I had my boundaries, mm -hmm. so we could agree. 
But when you don't know what your boundary is, anybody can convince you about yeah. what boundary is for That's them. Right. You know, and then you must have an agreement. Mm. So you know your boundaries, you define it. Mm. He knows his boundaries, he defines it. Mm. You come together and have an agreement. Because if there are no agreement of values, you cannot have agreed boundaries. Mm. So my wife and I were the discussion earlier on. That's it's a follow-up question in alignment with what we're actually discussing. And that would be our last question, mm. by the way. So we were actually discussing earlier on and we were discussing that there's a lot of pressure when it comes to relationship, especially on the lady side, where now you start to play the role of a wife, yet you're not a wife. Mm. So you're cooking for him, mm. you're going to his place, mm. you're cleaning for him, you're playing madame. You understand? So how can a young lady then protect herself from that and or try to not to play those significant role of being a wife when you're not yet a wife? What is it steps that they can do or things that they can do to help them not fall into that pitfall? Because it's through those pitfalls where you are just, you know, you become too relaxed and then the enemy attacks. And then the next thing is you are crying. Oh, I didn't know it was going to end like this. I didn't know. But it started from come cook for me. Come yeah, clean yeah, for I, me. I, come, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what we're talking about. What yeah. is your value system yeah. as a believer? What has God told you concerning relationship and marriage? What do you understand by it? Mm. Are you following trends or the word of God? Mm. You know, unfortunately, Christianity lately is kind of loose among young people. You know, but you see, there's no there's no there's no religion you join where they don't have their principles. Mm. And we have our principles and it's a guiding force. And our our religion is light. Is life so I wouldn't want to even call Christianity a religion mm -hmm. you understand it's life, it's life. Mm -hmm. it gives life you cannot follow God and you do not experience life mm -hmm. so now every young person who is in that kind of issue needs to start talking to ourselves mm -hmm. like what is my value system mm -hmm. you know who am I mm -hmm. do I need a man to complete me or I'm complete in Christ yeah mm -hmm. you know am I is my aim about marriage going to start pursuing a man, trying to convince a man? Mm. If the Holy Spirit doesn't convince a man for me, then the man is not mine. Mm. You know, mm. these are value systems mm. that I believe that a lot of believers must start building up. Yeah. And you can only build it up when you start fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Wow. True, and that's really very powerful. And then also, also know what triggers you. Mm. Yeah. yeah, what stirs you. What, what triggers it? For example, you go to cook for him, you know, wife yet, mm. you cook for him, probably wear the things that make you look very, and yeah. then you cook for him, you say, oh, your food is so nice, oh, you're so mm. tasty, and begins to tap you, and, mm, you know, yeah. and then you will know when you have journeyed into yeah. something you should know. So know what triggers you. Everybody has what boundary is for them. It starts from trigger. Mm -hmm. What triggers you? Do you understand? So, you, sh you should be able to sit down with a person and say, if I begin to start cooking for you, mm. I can cook up my emotions. Mm. And I will know when we're traveling to something we shouldn't do. So that is boundary on its own. So you have to know what triggers you. You know, one I saw an article, you know, a video somewhere, and they were interviewing uh, a couple. Mm. And they asked them, how long, how long were you in your relationship before you guys got married? Mm. I said, the relationship for about four or five years. Mm. And I said, wow. So what did you guys not do? What were your do's and don'ts? They, they never hugged until they got married. Mm. And people were dropping comments like, what? Hug, hug. <laughs> 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 like it's nothing. Boring. You're not parting me. But yeah. the truth is, you see, you need to know your what trigger. you want, trigger. what triggers you. Mm. So both of them oh. knew that if they hug themselves, it may lead it them be, to the bed. It may hug oh. them into the bed. Mm. So they had to put it. So you need to understand. So there's no, if you have to be rigid to stay righteous, yeah. I don't want to use the word stay righteous. If you have to be rigid for the purpose of sanctification, yeah. mm. if you have to be rigid for, for to stay pure, purity is sacrifice. Mm. So if, for example, cooking will lead you into staying pure, sorry, not cooking will lead you into staying, it doesn't matter whatever that person is doing, that's what my husband was saying. Yeah. By all means, don't cook. Mm. If hugging will lead you into not staying pure, by all means, don't hug. Mm. So they asked them, how were you guys able to, was it not boring? They said they engaged themselves. Mm. They will study books, they will have conversations. Yeah. Another thing again, idleness leads to sin. Mm. Yeah, sin strives on idleness. Wow. Yeah. Powerful. So when you are engaged, when you are very engaged, really, mm. when you are so engaged, you know, it minimizes most of all these things, you mm. know. 
So it's very important that you know your trigger. That's what we're trying wow. to see. Mm. Yeah. That's powerful. I think for me, what was important from what you said now is that you first and from, from first you must know yourself. Because yeah. you can't enter a relationship without knowing yourself. Because yeah. if you don't know yourself, you won't have a value system for True. yourself. You won't have boundaries, things that you are not willing to do. Mm. So I think one of the important things that we must know is that we must be prepared mm. first. Mm. And then we meet someone who is also prepared and we come together True. like that. So that was one of the... Wow. Things that I took from well, family, this is a wrap for us. But before we, we, we leave the win loss to leave South Africa, thank you, <laughs> thank you so much for being in our beautiful nation of South Africa. Thank you we so pray much. this is not the last time. No, it's not and we are be. trusting God for part two. So viewers and subscribers, make sure you prepare yourself for part two. But before we release you, yeah. we know this is a new year. Yeah. And people have New Year's resolutions. Some are trusting God for various things. Can you just say a word of prayer to young people that are trusting God for marriage, Trusting God for one or two things, please. Okay, um, let's pray. Um, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, thank you for your word that has gone forth. Amen. And I know that your word has done good to every listener. Amen. Even as they make their new re resolutions, they want to walk in the path of purity, they want to serve you, God, faithfully. Amen. I pray that grace is released in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Is there anyone seeking for a life partner, trusting God for a happy home? Father God, we pray that the blessings and the grace is released to them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your faithful God. Amen. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, family. We are so grateful. Thank Please, you. if you have not Thank given a life to Christ, there are numbers on the details that you can contact. One more thing. How can people follow you? How can they get in touch with the windows? What are the correct pages to follow? Because, yeah. I mean, if you search window... <laughs> 2002 2 million yeah. things comes out so how can they follow you on the correct platforms and pages okay so you can search for us on the windows that's t-h-e-d the windows w-i-n-l-o-s our pages are verified online then you can just click and follow then you always get updates relationship updates thank you so yeah. thank you so much this is from us the chanakas and the windows thank you thank, thank you so you much so god bless much. you bye bye bye, -bye.